Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about layout XLM, which involves multimodal pre-training for multilingual, visually rich document understanding. Uh, what is the need for multilingual, visually rich document understanding? So in one of the previous videos, we talked about layout LMV2, which has been shown to be able to perform really well on various visual, visually rich document understanding tasks. These tasks involve understanding forms, receipt understanding, complex layout understanding, document image classification, uh, and document visual question answering. Right? Um, all of these tasks essentially require joint modeling of text, layout, and image information. Uh, that is why basically layout LMV2 was proposed. However, it was proposed only for English. Now around 40% of digital web documents are actually non-English. Simply translating documents is not a very nice and a clean solution. And therefore, the idea is, can we build a multilingual pre-trained model for visually, doc visually rich document understanding? Now, clearly there are many, many multilingual pre-trained models like uh, MBERT, XLM, XLM Roberta, MBERT, InfoXLM, and MT5, even Delta LM, right? However, none of them actually incorporate the layout information uh, inherently. And that is why there is a need to build a multilingual visually rich document understanding pretend model. Okay. And that is where layout XLM fits in, right? This is a broad architecture out uh, for, for layout XLM. Uh, given a particular document, you process it through OCR and you also process it through a visual encoder so as to get visual embeddings. The OCR gives you text, which leads to text tokens. The visual encoder gives you uh, various visual, visual tokens. So the uh, input is essentially a combination of visual or text, a visual and text embeddings, right? 2D positional embedding, as well as 1D, one dimensional position embedding. Uh, this architecture is very, very similar to layout LMV2. Um, as I mentioned, the input is visual plus text plus layout. And then you're actually using a multimodal transformer encoder, uh, which has especially aware self-attention mechanism, just like layout LMV2. Um, the visual encoder that is used here, actually follows the ResNext 101 FPN framework. Uh, that is that is the backbone. And then about initialization, well, the text uh, embeddings are actually obtained using InfoXLM, which is a multilingual text-based model. And visual encoding is actually obtained uh, using ResNext 101 FPN backbone, which is initialized using mask RCNN, which in turn is trained using PubliNet uh, dataset. So uh, this model is trained in two different sizes, layout XLM base and layout XLM large. Layout XLM base is a 12 layer model with 345 million parameters and large is 24 layer model with 625 million parameters. Uh, the two models are very similar in that sense to layout LM V2. Uh, there are these parts to the model architecture, which we'll discuss when we discuss about fine tuning the model. Okay. How is layout XLM pre-trained? So uh, it uh, just like layout LMV2, it uses three different pre-training objectives. MVLM, but here MVLM is actually modified to be multilingual in nature. TIA, text image alignment, and text image matching TIM. Right? Uh, so the way uh, multilingual masked visual language modeling differs from MVLM masked visual language modeling in layout LMV2 is as follows. Uh, here, the model is actually, um, I mean, the task is the same. The model is required to predict the masked token, text token based on the remaining text tokens, like text context, and the whole layout clues, right? Uh, however, uh, rather than obtaining uh, word level bounding boxes, here, character level bounding boxes are obtained from the OCR. After sentence piece tokenization is done on the text, OCR text, you calculate the bounding box for each token by actually merging the bounding boxes of all the characters inside the token. So you actually therefore obtain um, a, a representation uh, for the entire token rather than the entire word. Right? So uh, the token is actually assembled uh, character by character. That's how the multilingual masked visual language modeling differs. Otherwise, it's just the same as the MVLM in layout LMV2. The pre-training data, well, uh, the pre-training data was downloaded, uh, consists of uh, a large number of downloaded publicly available multilingual digital bond PDF documents rather than scanned PDF documents, right? Um, so digital bond PDF documents actually lead to better accuracies in terms of OCR and so on, and therefore they are good to use in that sense. Uh, 
uh, they use uh, open source PDF parser, PyMu PDF to actually extract text layout and document images from the PDF documents. They do a whole bunch of cleanup. They discard discard documents with less than 200 characters, discard those documents which where, where the language of the document is sort of unclear, um, where the language is established, language detection is done using the Blink Fire library. Finally, you have documents across languages. So just like uh, done while doing XLM pre-training, you sample the documents uh, across languages for a particular batch in the proportion of uh, uh, the overall number of documents in the collection. Of course, with a with a with a high parameter alpha, with a power alpha, right? So a total of 30 million documents are actually used for pre-training. 22 million are visually rich documents in 53 languages, and 8 million for English are actually directly obtained from IIT CDF dataset. Um, so uh, now they also invested in actually building a new data set called XFund. It's a multilingual form understanding data set. It's an annotated data set, right? It's a manually annotated data set. The manual annotations look like this. So given any form, this is a Chinese form. You know, they manually annotate four different kinds of semantic entities on it. Uh, here is the header. Here are the keys. Here are the values. And then there is also a fourth annotation called others. Uh, this data set actually exists in seven different languages um, besides English, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, French, Italian, German, and Portuguese. Right? So, of course, it extends the English FUNSD data set to these seven languages. Two kinds of tasks can be performed on this data set. Semantic entity recognition, which is about extracting semantic entities and classifying them into one of those four types. Question, answer, uh, that is key or value, header or other. Right? Question, answer, header or other. Relation extraction is the task of uh, establishing relations. Here, they mainly care about key value relations, and therefore the head is typically the key and the tail is the value for this relation uh, type, uh, relation extraction. Okay. Uh, the way the dataset is generated, it's well manually generated. So form templates were first collected in seven languages from the web. Human annotators were then, human annotators were then asked to synthetically fill these forms. It was ensured that one template is filled only once so as to have lots of variety in the data set. And uh, then completed forms are then scanned using OCR, uh, 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 are scanned and then text is obtained using OCR uh, via Microsoft Read API. Uh, key value labeling is also done by annotators. So annotators were asked to actually uh, then look at these OCR tokens, combine them, group them into entities, assign predefined labels to these entities, one of those four labels, right? Question, answer, header, or other. And then they were also asked to uh, figure out key value relations between entity pairs. So which particular uh, question relates to which particular answer as a key value relation, right? So there are totally uh, 199 forms, you know, for each of those languages, 149 for train and 50 for test, right? So 199 for seven languages leads to 1,393 forms in the entire data set. It is split as you see across different languages. They are split across train and test. And then there are also these four different types of entities. Um, as you see, there are a whole bunch of questions and answers in this data set as expected. Now let's talk about this remaining part, the fine tuning part, um, uh, or, or the remaining part of this uh, um, of, of, of the uh, layout XLM model. So uh, after you obtain the outputs from the multimodal transformer encoder layers, you can actually use them for semantic entity recognition as well as for relation extraction. In case of semantic entity recognition, the idea is to be able to extract whether they are whether a particular token belongs to header, question, answer, or other, and therefore they model it as a sequential sequence labeling problem. Sequence labeling problem using the BIO format. So as you see here, begin header, begin question, inside header, inside question, and so on. Right. Uh, so uh, task specific layers are actually built over the text part of the layout XLM so as to uh, so as to uh, obtain predictions for the semantic entity recognition task. Relation extension task is more, more interesting. Uh, so the way this is modeled is as follows. You first construct the set of relation candidates by producing all pairs of given semantic entities. So you know uh, there's a there's a header, there is question, there's answer, uh, different kinds of entities, you form all pairs. For every pair, the representation of the head and tail entity is the concatenation of a head or a tail entity, whether it is a head entity or a tail entity, right? Whether it is a question or an answer, the representation for that is basically obtained using uh, the beginning of that. So it's a concatenation of the first token vector, which is basically marked as the P, right? 
and the entity type embedding obtained using a specific entity embedding layer. Okay. So that's a representation for a head entity or a tail entity, whatever it is, right, which is participating in the relation. You then uh, uh, take these representations for a head or tail entity and then pass them to, through to feed forward neural network layers. And finally, you concatenate the representation for the head and the tail and feed it to uh, by a fine classifier layer, which sort of predicts if this, these, this head and tail represent a relationship or not, right? So it predicts whether they are key value pairs or not. Now let's talk quickly about layout XLM performance. So, uh, well, they fine tune layout XLM in three different ways. Uh, the first way is uh, when you fine tune on language X and test on language X only. So this is language specific fine tuning. You build a model per language, right? Um, the other way to do this is zero shot transfer learning, which is basically you fine tune on English only and test on all other languages. So here you just need to build one model uh, on English only and you test on all other languages, right? And then the last one is multitask fine tuning, where you fine tune on all eight languages and test on 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 each of those uh, each of those uh, test set of each of those languages. So again, you build one model only, right? So in language specific fine tuning, of course, you build so many models, one model per language, and uh, um, you know here you see the results for both the task semantic entity recognition and relation extraction, and you see the results uh, for uh, uh, which compare you know these different models. So XLM Roberta. Info XLM and layout XLM, right? Um, the, the comparison is done across base as well as large sized models, and it is done across different languages. Fun SD, remember, is English, right? And then you see Chinese, Japanese, uh, Spanish, French, Italian, German, uh, and Portuguese, right? So across all of those languages, you find that uh, you know, no matter which task you take, and no matter whether you take base model or the large model, you observe that layout XLM gives you better results. Clearly, layout XLM gives you better results when you use the large model versus the small model. Now, for zero shot transfer learning, um, of course, you're training only on English, fine tuning only on English, but then you're testing on other languages, so you expect the results to be uh, a little worse, uh, and uh, you do see that uh, the results are not as good as language-specific fine tuning, but hey, you just built one model, so that is great. Right? Uh, lastly, what is more interesting, is that you do multitask fine tuning uh, and then you essentially test on each of those individual languages and you see that the best results that you obtain uh, the, the, the results that you obtain using this kind of a setup are are the best so 84.29 on average compared to the best 82.82 for uh, semantic entity recognition and uh, 84.58 which is the uh, for relation extraction which is way better than 72.06 uh, with uh, uh, language specific fine tuning so in summary, in this video, I talked about layout XLM, which is more like a, an extension of layout LM v2, but for multilingual case, right? It's a multilingual multimodal pre-trained model for multilingual document understanding. It's pre-trained using 30 million scanned and digital bond documents in 53 different languages, right? Um, on the way, they also contribute X1 data set, which is a multilingual form understanding data set, which is human annotated with key value pairs in seven different languages, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, French, Italian, German, and Portuguese. Multitask fine tuning gives the best results with layout XLM large for both the semantic entity recognition and relation extraction tasks. The pre-trained models, data set, everything is available at akka.ms slash layout XLM. Okay, hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Here is my LinkedIn to connect with me, and uh, that's my homepage.